Hey. Hey there, how are you doing? Hold on. Uh, there we go. What's going on? My speaker's not set up. All right, say something to somebody. Hello. Hey, all right. I had my had my speakers turned off for some reason. Oh, well, there you go. Can you hear me now? I can. All right. Well, somehow I think there's some others on here, but I got to figure out how to figure out where they are. Well, I see Yosta is on here from Sweden. All right, I got it. So there were, we haven't even started yet. Yeah, well, people are excited. <laughs> That's just because you're on. Have you figured out what we're going to talk about yet? That's my the big mystery, I think. <laughs> there, there is no mystery. It's whatever you want to chat about. Uh, okay. I one thing, you, you wouldn't mind promoting your book. Oh, okay, great. Among other things. Hey, Brian. How are you, Charlie? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. So I, have, I have my new uh piece from Action Engineering due to be delivered to me today called The Wall, which is for water base. And I, I mentioned it. So I'm going to uh, uh -huh. go to a shop tomorrow. So the, the clearance between the, the flood bar and the side of the wall is about a little over an eighth of an inch or so, maybe a quarter of an inch. And it curves at the top so as the ink gets pushed up it gets dumped back in again so it's like a winged flood bar kind of a thing no no it's actually going to uh, sit inside the screen barely missing what happens with water base you get that whole build up on the sides uh -huh. uh, from when it passes the flood bar and so it sits there and it gets crusty and then when you push it back into the image area it ends up clogging the image area so now you're, you're down having to scrub your screens out. So with this, um, that shouldn't happen. What will happen is the ink will just hit this wall, get pushed up and dumped back in without having the opportunity to get crusty. Almost like a snow plow. Huh? Yeah, Almost exactly. like a snow plow. Pretty yeah. much. And it should work on plastisol as well. Not that you have crustiness there, but it'll also allow you to use that much more ink before you have to go and push it into the center again. Exactly. You're going to have less yeah. labor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a lot of people have that floater guy that scoops the ink back, especially for long runs, scoops the ink back in the middle of the screen so you have to stop. So. Correct. This would do this. This would do it instead. And um, so I'm kind of anxious to get it tested out and do a bit of a video on it. Hopefully, I'll have it done by the end of this week. Right. Great. Good. And that's that works for any press? Uh, yeah. It, it has nothing to do with the machine. Uh, it has to do with it just right. it's a uh, inset into the screen. And okay. it's adjustable based on the width of your flood bar. OK. So yeah. It, so it has like a set screw or something to expand you know, to the that, different width? Uh, I actually have a diagram of what it looks like. So, oh, uh, see that. Okay. So, um, what you have are adjustments on either side so that you can put it in tight to the flood bar. And right. so, it doesn't, re that's why I say it doesn't matter whose machine you're using. Uh, it has nothing to do with the machine. It's a whole system that sets in. I think the only thing that you have to do is uh, put some tape on the sides so that as the squeegee is riding, obviously it's metal. So uh, the, the uh, mesh will push down slightly and you would have the ink go underneath. So by having uh, tape on the exterior that'll flex a bit, you shouldn't really have much of an issue there but you wouldn't be able to put tape on the inside because otherwise the flood bar is going to uh, grab the tape and, and 
basically chew it up. But I do want to get it on the machine so, to see how it does. Yeah. Anyway. What's well, cool? So, so have they tested it yet, or are you the test? I am it. It's my idea. <laughs> uh, so uh, Eric sent it to me, and uh, I get I get the opportunity to test it and to do the video on it. But I'm I'm pretty com comfortable about um, the way it should work, and certainly having been to enough shops, especially over overseas like Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, where uh, they're running predominantly water based. Um, you know, they're forever having to have somebody stand at every screen and push the ink in, which yeah. even though labor is cheap, when you put, you know, when you have uh, a, a six, six screens on a press, you got six people standing around. I don't care how little you're paying. You're, you're definitely cutting into your profit margin because they're not right. getting paid a huge amount. Right. How, how's your book coming along? Uh, how's it selling? My book is, is selling pretty well. I've got a, um, I've hired a publicist and uh, we're getting some uh, traction there and I've got all my drip marketing stuff I've launched. And so uh, we're doing some stuff. So pretty happy about it. Terrific. Mm -hmm. How many copies have you got? Been, I don't care if you, if you don't say, but you know, have you sold 50 copies, a hundred copies? 10,000 oh, copies. Yeah, so we're, 10, we're retiring. <laughs> I'm not retiring, but uh, yeah, uh, let me just say is uh, we're selling more now that the, the, I don't know if it's because we're getting closer to the election or the pandemic is getting worse, but sales are picking up. <laughs> so, mm. um, um, you know, and I think, I think a lot has to do with the fact we're marketing the book more. Yeah. Um, I don't want to get into numbers and stuff, but um, no, it's, no. I'm I'm way happier than I was like a month ago. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a good thing then. Yeah. Well, it is a good thing. That's why I wrote the book. You know, oh, absolutely. And, and so we we started yet? Uh, we, we, yeah, we don't have any formal situation. So yes, we've started, and who knows who's going to show up? But <laughs> um, okay. So yeah. let's, let so well, since I'm talking about the book, that's the reason I asked. So. If we were talking about the book, let me just explain what it is. And uh, for anybody who's watching live now or uh, later with, with the recording. So what Charlie was talking about is my new book called Moving Past Disaster, which I wrote when uh, the zombie apocalypse happened and everybody was in their little lockdown shelter way back in March and April. And, uh, and Charlie will tell you, as a consultant, when you stop traveling and stop doing stuff, you got lots of time on your hands. <laughs> so what I did is I spent that time writing a book, right? And so the book is all about using creative mental models that I've used for a really long time. They come from two books, actually. One's called uh, Thinker Toys, which is a super famous book by Michael Machalko. The other is uh, Whack on the Side of the Head by this guy named Roger Van Oak. And um, so these are uh, books that kind of make you think differently. And I have a creative background. I'm an ex art director. And I've used these books to kind of help me think of like when you have to design the coolest t-shirt on the face of the planet a dozen times a day, you know, after a while you run into ideas. And so this, I've used the techniques in this book, not only for art design, but also for writing business plans and doing some things in shops for a number of years. And uh, uh, so I was thinking about how people are going to adjust after the pandemic and what are they gonna do? And if we don't go back to the old way, how are we going to retool our business using uh, the, what's gonna be new? What can I do with, if I'm only doing business with, for example, schools or sports, what happens if we don't have schools and sports? Are you, is your business dead? What are we going to be doing? And a lot of people are kind of stuck in the mud with how they think. They can only think in terms of what I know and what I've been doing and not understanding there's ways that you can just unlock these ideas if you just knew how. And that's what this book is about. So we start off with uh, taking a snapshot of your business 
uh, I have a self-assessment worksheet that you that you just do the exercises, ask you some questions, you put the answers down, and uh, using the exercises from these books that I learned from, you're going to develop, I don't know, 50, 80, 100 different ideas about what you can do with your business, and then you're going to take the best ones that you like the best, you're going to write a brand new business plan based on these new ideas, and then there's a way that you, I've got it sculpted out where you can write a two year, 24 month action plan for achieving the success. And it's all through doing just these exercises in the book. And um, so I've got a, a bunch of businesses in the middle of working it right now. And I'm also uh, um, halfway through putting together an online course um, for people who might need a little extra help. I'm filming all those videos. And I'll have that released probably in August and well, probably the end of August actually. And then, um, uh, but it's selling really well. I'm starting uh, really to do some marketing with it, which is what I was alluding to a minute ago. Um, but uh, is anybody like, you know, Yoster or Brian, do you have any questions on it? I'd love to, to answer or even you, Charlie, uh, about the book. Um. I mean, it sounds interesting. Obviously, um, I know you're going into different markets other than the screen printing market or the textile yes. market. It's written for any, yeah, it's written for any business. You could sell insurance or sell clothes or be a hardware store. I mean, the book is written for really anybody. Um, and it's just because people, the way people are doing things have changed. And uh, so what are you going to do to adapt? And um so it asks lots of questions and poses. Uh, it really kind of gets your creative juices flowing. I was talking with this guy the other day, and their problem wasn't coming up with new ideas. He actually wrote eight different new business plans, and his challenge was, which one do I do? <laughs> right? Pick one and, and go off the other seven. Yeah, right. So that, that is you know, so I'm like my answer to him was, well, you gotta you gotta do you gotta pick one right. and do some action on it. You can't Absolutely. just have a plan. You gotta like like start initiate it. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. So the, the the challenge isn't coming up with new ideas, and that's what the book is about: is how to develop them. It's what are you gonna do with it? Okay. Right? And um, sounds so anyway. So that's 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 what that the book's about. Well, that, that uh, yeah, because the fact that we're an ink manufacturer, uh, we were considering uh, starting some brands with uh, the specialty inks, but uh, because of COVID, uh, not sure want to uh, deal with it. We have the luxury within our uh, manufacturing complex that um, we have a guy that uh, does um, retail to the public, uh, all the closeouts for Vans, Nike, yeah. Converse, all that. Tremendous amount of traffic. I sit here at my desk right now and I look at uh, the doors boarded up basically. And, um, you know, them having to do curbside delivery of the shoes. People can't even go in their showroom. So uh, not sure that uh, we're going to go ahead with that. But um, up until a couple of weeks ago, our business is actually... He uh, was doing very, very well on the ink side. Um, we have two sides, the ink side and then the safety side of our right. business. But uh, last couple of weeks have been very, very spotty um, and uh, unusual. Lots of uh, sampling and things of that effect, but nothing uh, of the typical big orders that we had been getting, even with COVID going on. So, yeah. uh, in, Well, in you know, for, for you, Brian, the thing to think about is, not what you can push out, but if you can demonstrate how somebody can use your product for what's going on now, right? So uh, like, is there, you know, what's, what are people actually printing? You know, so right now, the, the folks that are doing the best printing right now, they're the busiest or anybody that does business with any type of service industry, you know, so maybe the schools aren't locked down, but you know what, the auto mechanics are still, they're still fixing yeah. cars right? We're still uh, doing things. We're still delivering our food. We're still doing stuff in hospitals. We're still, yep. uh, we're, we're uh, you know, bands have adjusted and they're selling all their t-shirts online with the online concert. So we're not in-person concerts, but we're doing an online right. thing. 
So there's a lot of people doing some crazy stuff. It's just they're doing it differently. Yep. And so for you, I think the challenge that you guys should be thinking about is how can I adjust to that? And where I think a lot of businesses fail, especially with their marketing, is their marketing is all me, 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 me. This is what we do. This is what we do. This right. is what we do. We do a sale. We do this. And not understanding that your customer is the hero in positioning your marketing about, hey, somebody used our glow-in-the-dark ink, and they used it exactly like this, and they sold 15,000 shirts just by doing this one thing, and you create the marketing piece about that with a step-by-step -step of how people can do it, get the thing, and then we'll show you how to use it, and then you can market it, and we'll order the ink from us, and you can have that success also. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that's where I think a lot of people uh, really fail with their marketing. It's all about, you know, what we're offering and it's the product benefits and details and has nothing to do with how people normally buy, which is based on emotion and, um, uh, uh, you know, that that need to achieve. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, aspiration. Yep. Which is something different. Um, hey, Sean's here. What's up, buddy? Sorry, I was a few minutes late. I was just finishing up another one that went long. Yeah, how about that? Yeah. How's it going there? So I'm I, good. I, I got an interesting email this week. Um, I'm working with Patrick from um, Duracent. He's been uh, right. hospitalized um, with um, a variety of illnesses. He had a heart and, attack, didn't he? Huh? Like last year, did he have a heart attack? Yeah, well, now he also has, um, he's had a stroke and has some paralysis and stuff. And so oh. he gave me a buzz and asked if I would help him with some of the stuff that he's doing, which mm -hmm. I'm happy to help out with. I kind of like, I'll call them junk inks, but they're not junk. But in any event, um, I'm online and my wife says, hey, you got to see this. So she sends over the email to me. So it's my lawn band and it's a scented t-shirt. They have... Uh, strawberry raspberry and cherry i think and they're and the t-shirts are on sale for 295 dollars a piece from 500 Great. and and uh 90. i'll take two so i i sent it over to patrick and he said well i can handle that he thought it was two dollars and 95 cents and it's like no it's 295 dollars you know what's always interesting to me um when you deal with obviously the stuff that we're familiar with, I mean, how tough is it to, you know, uh, print up a, a, an image of a strawberry or a cherry or whatever, and um, stick it on a t-shirt, you know, for us, it's like, yep, no big deal. I mean, that's, right. that's $295, but it smells like blackberries. Right. Isn't that wonderful? And, and yeah, doesn't, well, they, doesn't she look really uh, happy wearing this thing? <laughs> we, need a, we need a bacon t-shirt that smells like bacon. Uh, he has that. I've, I've used the bacon. I've used the beer. I've used the pork. I mean, you know, I think that kind of fun. Uh, the barbecue is really good during the summer. But, uh, you know, I don't think, I think the biggest thing that I got out of it is, I don't think there's, there's a screen printer that I, I know that couldn't do this. When you show them a shirt like this and you tell them it's on sale for $295, it freaks them out. And it's yeah. like, I, I, true enough, you do have to have a designer label and Lon Van certainly is a designer. Uh, but suppose you got $29.95 for it. Still right. not a bad deal. Right. You know, so I, I'm always amazed by, and I, lo I love that type of stuff, but it always amazes me what, what designers can get away with. And of course, they probably nickeled and dimed whoever it is that's doing the printing for them. Well, you know, here's the thing, Charlie. A lot of times it's just a matter of how comfortable you are with the zeros after a price. And for some people, $300 for a T-shirt is just crazy talk. But, you know, if uh, you make that a millisecond because you're a gazillionaire, who gives a crap? I'll buy three. 
you know, so it's just a matter of who you're marketing to and, and that, and that level and where it's being sold. And then some people, it doesn't matter to them. And so if you, your business is catering to that level of wealth, they're always looking for something new because they want to show their friends that they've got something that somebody else doesn't have. Right. Well, I totally agree. And I think uh, the big thing is when I do uh, one of my seminars, I, I have a bunch of these types of things. Uh, my favorite one is a white sweatshirt with white embroidery. It's got black cuffs, black um, trim around the edges, and it has um, feathers sewn onto it. And uh, the cost is $4,595 or is it $5,490? I forget. And people are like, does anyone buy it? And it's like, if you look at the, the piece that I sent around, it says size medium is sold out. And so here's a $5,000 sweatshirt. And it's, so, you know, and one of those, I mean, how many do you have to sell it? Five grand a, a sweatshirt, you know? Um, right. I'm always amazed how people in our industry are not aware of the fact that there are shirts that go for crazy amounts of money and yeah. are afraid to put a number out there. Yep. So I was at a, before the lockdown this, this year, I did some workflow work with a decorator in, uh, at Eastern Seaboard, I don't want to tell you who, but uh, they have, I don't know, nine brother GTXs. And um, so the digital print, everything is a one-off and they're getting about $120 a t-shirt. Yeah. And everybody thinks that you have to sell at 15, 16, $20 or whatever. Okay. Uh, but if you've got the sales, if you've got the website, if you've got the brand name, if you've got a lot of stuff, you're using the tools that everybody in our industry has. Uh, you just, you're just doing it better because you've got the marketing chops to be able to get the price that you want, right? You're not catering to the same people. You're catering to a higher level and it's all based on uniqueness, customization, scarcity, um, aspiration we want to be in that tribe you know look at that brand supreme you know it's a white shirt with a red box that says supreme in it and those things go for you know 150 bucks or whatever right and it's because people are oh yeah i have to be part of that i'll pay for that right and uh, and then they're always doing these one-off designs and stuff or look at johnny cupcakes right so he's always doing limited edition things the shirts sell out in a couple minutes. It's just a normal t-shirt print, right? It's just how you market it. And that I totally makes it different. marketing is absolutely the biggest thing going. Right. You know, I know all of us have done enough seminars. You know, there's always someone who comes up and says, Hey, I got this great idea. What do you think? It's like, don't even tell me. The biggest question is not what the idea is. How are you going to market it? If you know how to market it, you could be selling garbage. And it's still going to sell if you if you can have the greatest thing in the world. Right. And if you don't know how to market it, you couldn't give it away. Yeah. Well, you know, remember somebody sold pet rocks. Uh, my favorite. I, I love <laughs> the pet rock. You know, I went to Bloomingdale's to buy one and they were sold out. Yeah. And someone says, how can they be sold out? Why don't you just go outside and pick up a rock? I said, time out. I grew up in Brooklyn. We don't have rocks. We have pebbles. And it's difficult to have a pet pebble because they're a little too small. But yeah, the yeah, whole you thing was you got a cardboard box that, it, that was the shape of a house, a straw base, a rock, and a manual on how to take care of your rock. And I think at that time it was about $15. The professor who came out with it, I think sold a million and a half of those and then retired. Right. And it was just to prove to his class that you could sell anything if you marketed correctly which he obviously did a pretty damn good job. Right, right. And, and we're in the marketing business. We think of ourselves as apparel decorators, but in reality, right, it's, it's the marketing into things that we really need to work on more. I, I, totally. And, uh, we, we have a similar thing in Sweden. Uh, reindeer, you know, they, in, in Swedish, 
it's like um, the same word as clean. You know? So they, they can rain their smell. You know? <laughs> so clean air in a can. Clean air in a can, but it's the same word as reindeer? Yep. So it's reindeer air. You know, in a can. It's a picture of a reindeer, and that, but when they open it, it's just clean air because it's the same, same word. Yeah. Yep. And it sells. Right, hold itself. on. Do, does, does a reindeer smell clean? I want to think a reindeer no, kind of no, smells. No, it doesn't. It <laughs> doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, I have a reindeer rug that I picked up when I was in Sweden, and it was like, now nah, when it when you put your nose to it, not a great smell at all. It almost sounds like uh, Marcel Duchamp with his twenty cc's of Paris air, which of course you never got to smell because it was bottled. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, marketing is everything, you know. Right. All right, cool. So, uh, did you guys see I launched the new pe podcast? I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's called uh, Success Stories. Uh, SNS Activewear is sponsoring it. And okay. um, I listened to it. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked it. How, did you like the music I did at the beginning? Yeah. Yeah, let me tell you. So I have um, access. I use an app, uh, a software company called Envato Elements, and I pay them thirty-five dollars a month. And I have unlimited downloads for photos, for graphics, for templates, for tutorials, and it turns out uh, for music, right? And videos, like all kinds of stuff. It's just, it's really great. And, um, and I, I've been using them for a couple of years, mainly for my blog, but now that I'm doing more stuff, I, I can find resources in there. And so when I was putting this music together uh, for the podcast, I bet I listened to four or 500 little snippets of songs to start a podcast out. Yeah. And, um, I, you know, I was going to go with rock guitars because I like that, you know, and then. I thought that was too aggressive, and um, so I, I found something I thought was really kind of fun, and that's why I was asking. Just yeah, you know, see, it's kind of interesting, you know, because I'm not a musician, but I like music, you know, and um, so you can't, you kind of know, you kind of know what you want, right? And um, so yeah, I think it, I think uh, the whole thing together was good. Well, it was really good, and then I will look forward to have that in the car or in the way just to boast up the day, you know. Yeah, right. So I got episodes that are coming out on the second and fourth Wednesday of every month. Cool. And yeah, and so I'm busy recording new ones and all kinds of stuff. And our next one is going to be with uh, Shelby Craig with Rocket Shirts, and it's oh. all about uh uh selling on facebook and google adwords and seo and website stuff so cool very very good very good episode i thought yeah. so um, and, and i'm working my way through your book <laughs> good good doing all the stuff you know so do you have my moving past disaster book yeah all right so what do you think of the book since we were just talking about it yeah, I, it opens uh, a lot of things that you you kind of forgot, you know, because I've been doing business for a long time, but you you tend to, well, I, I, I throw this from my hip, you know, I, I, I do it by feeling or by move, but you can't measure or you can't say to somebody else, that use your feeling like this to get everything on paper and to get it on the desk and take the subject over the table in the dinner time to just discuss with the other people involved. That was a really, really good thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we learned a lot. Good, good. Yeah. And so, where are you in the book? Have you got to the? You're writing a business plan yet? Or are you still doing the exercises where you're coming up with ideas? 
Yeah, it, we're, we're going to start with the business plan. Okay. Yep. Good. So there, I, yeah, I, I liked it. I never th thought about it that way before, but because I always managed to fix something and right. to get it running, but well, that's me. Yeah, you, so Yoast uh, business plan is, uh, is critical for a running a, uh, running a company because uh, what you're doing with a business plan is you're highlighting a, a bullseye, a target. Mm -hmm. Right. And if you don't define that, you'll never hit it. And what we want to be doing is defining our bullseye. So we know what we're doing. We know where we're going after. We know who our best clients are. And if we know where the bullseye is, well, then we can streamline all our marketing and everything we're doing and all of our effort to the customers who will pay us the most money. And then everybody else doesn't matter. And like, and you're in Sweden, so I don't know if this is going to translate well, but I'm from the American South, Florida, okay? Mm -hmm. And for me, all types of soda, it doesn't matter what flavor it is, it's all a Coke. So if I said, if we're fishing, and Sean's in Georgia, he can probably attest to this. If we're fishing and I'll say, hey, hand me a Coke, it can be any soda, right? And that's what I mean, just hand me a Coke, right? But if it's a Pepsi, I absolutely won't drink it because Pepsi to me tastes like flat Coca-Cola and I hate it, right? So, uh, and so the reason I bring this up is in our business plan, right? I want you to find your Coke drinkers that align with what you do because we don't give a crap about those Pepsi people. They'll never buy from us ever. It's a waste of our time and money and effort to try to go after those Pepsi folks, we only want to talk to the, the Coke people because they'll, they'll, they're the ones that kind of buy into what we do. And a business plan helps us isolate that group so we can market directly to the people who will best serve us and go after who we, who we want to do business with. And so it's really um, important that's, that you finish the business plan because that's a critical component for developing your success. So yeah, sense. It, 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 it's a new twist on how how I used to work because I'm kind of problem solver. I have always been fixing somebody else's problem and taking good money for that. And if there's something that I didn't know how to do, I have my network of people that I take the pros in to do this. But I was always solving somebody else's problem right. but, but now when when we got this when i come into this business it has some other uh, lanes that i can explore right. to push out other products to new markets and sure. that's something new well just think about you know if you write your business plan the right way you can figure out how you can work half as hard for twice as much mm -hmm. yeah right so and that's what we want, right? So we don't have to work as hard and we can make more money or work the, or work the same amount of time and you work twice as, you make twice as much, you know? And that's because we're eliminating the people that don't matter, that don't pay us well, that there's not profitable or it's a waste of our time or we can give them something else and we don't really, we can automate something and we don't really have to spend a lot, a lot of time with it. Right, so those are all examples that you can do just by building a better uh, focus on your business with a with that business plan. Yeah, and the, and that thing that Alan always push on uh, the document of uh, uh, how to do things. Right. In the station, point by point, just like that, and right. the next station, point by point, so it it's mm -hmm. uh, duplicatable, you know. So. Right. Sure. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, you got the article from Screen Printing. <coughs> so, what were your goals, Sean? Um, I actually had more than twenty goals. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it's something that um, all of our uh, management team have read and gone through to help start pinpointing specific things that we needed to improve within the business. Um, right. And we started it before COVID. Um, 
and now we're re-entertaining it once we realize, okay, we got to do something else now um, yeah. just to, well, to make sure we can still make hay. Well, here, here's the thing, and I see Adam's on here. I don't know if he's watching or not. At least he's, he's listening. Okay. So here's the thing that I would do with all your management team is on Monday, they need to identify what something in their department and their purview of what their responsibilities are. What are you going to change to make a difference in the company by Friday? And this could be, we're going to train somebody or we're going to relay out the floor or we're going to try a new process or a new ink or a new emulsion or a new embroidery backing or whatever, right? You're going to change something. And then so you ask this on Mondays, on Fridays, it need to be, okay, well, so what happened? Was it a success? What did you learn if it wasn't? That type of stuff. And then it's these small incremental things. Right, so we, like that, that article was really about major big things that you're gonna do, right? But I'll tell you, you'll have more success if you just work on trying to get 1% better every day because cumulatively, the, all these little things that we tweak and change, they stack up, right? And so there's a really great book by uh, James Clear called Atomic Habits, I recommend that. And he talks in that book about stacking where uh, it's not so much, um, these big huge goals that we we you know we want to increase sales to whatever your sales are you know we want to get to a million dollars or two million dollars or ten million dollars what happens after we hit the goal hey we we achieved the goal that's fantastic okay what next what's next the the idea here is that we build our process for improvement so every single day we're working on improvement Proving things, we're not so much goal oriented on these big, huge things. We're working on these tiny little things constantly, all the time, right? Yeah. And one of the one of the things we did, um, just he, we've been trying to get scheduled and time management enough so that we could reach out to our clients and yep. and talk to them. So we actually uh, took our top, um, probably our top three hundred clients. Right. We did the A, B, C, D. Uh, being on right. them, and then we split them up when we started calling them and uh, so Adam was the lucky recipient of a, a contact where it actually developed a 250 right. face mask order so yeah I mean and, and that was nice to see a result within yeah. a week normally those see a little bit more time in germination sure well it's, it's, it's about like setting the course you know so uh, in uh, ISS Long Beach, I actually did a private sales class for a company. They, uh, they actually rented a beach house and I did a, for their whole sales team was there and I led them through a private workshop. And one of the things that I kind of outlined for them was, um, you know, you have to set the course every day about what the expectation is. How many phone calls am I making today? How many clothes you know, I want to close, right? So what are we doing to achieve these goals? And if you build your process out, right? So you identify, for the first thing is, in, I, I'm just making a phone call. The thing is, who am I actually calling, right? Who am I actually calling? Develop that process where you're identifying a target, it, you're qualifying some way, I'm going to be calling them or somebody else is calling them. What was the result, you know, and, you know, no doesn't necessarily mean no forever. It could just be no right now, right? So we need to kind of work the process where we follow up. That's where drip marketing comes in play sometimes. You know, you can send people educational stuff or videos or whatever. And eventually you achieve your goal by closing the sale. And sometimes you just hit the home run on the first pitch, I guess like Adam did with the mass, right? So it's just really identifying what you're gonna do and set that out with intent. Um, and, you know, in Shirt, Shirt Lab, actually, I think we talked about um, return on intent. We've done that, that a couple of times where, you know, what are you setting up? That's why we do that Monday, Monday thing, right? What are you, what are you intending to do this week? I mean, it, it, in one of my prior lives and when I had an insurance and financial services business, yeah, um, I had an upside down pad of paper and I did Q, um, or contacts, quotes, sales, referrals, and I'd tick mark every one of them every day and I'd keep track of it. And then 
I would compare my results based on phone calls out to the telemarketers that we're using and things like that. And it worked so well that I stopped doing it for this. Right. Oh, well, yeah. why? Yeah, it's just not something I didn't think of until just now with that. Well, um, so Sean, you got you can't manage what you don't measure, right? So if you're measuring your results, right, if you're keeping a scorecard, right, whatever term you want to use, this is what I'm doing, these are the results, and you're keeping that, and you can set the expectations. Well, the best results that we have is when we make this many phone calls, because let's say your close rate is 20%. You know, so if you make 10 phone calls, 20 end up being closers, right? How many phone calls do you need to make? If you want to increase sales, you can just do the math and go, hey, we need to make 50 phone calls today. I need two more people making phone calls. Yep. Right. I'm and we're so, already thinking about that process. Right. So it's just kind of what are you setting up? Right. Um, and you got to make it easy, right? So um, the easier you make it, the frictionless you make it. Um, where's the bottleneck? What, where do people stub their toe? This is just by really just uh, tweaking things all the time, you know. Um, and sales is hard, <laughs> right? Sales is hard, especially now because it's all crazy. Yeah, it's all crazy. Um, cool. So, uh, you got any questions? I think we had a, a short one today. Um, never know how many people are going to show up, and obviously this time, not that many. Yeah. Sorry about that. But um, it is being recorded, and so um, all I got to do is figure out how to post it afterwards. I may have to call you and figure that out. Oh, okay. Well, uh, it's uh, – so you're you, – this is on Zoom – Yes. So you, what you could do is you can download the Zoom video right. and then you can uh, upload it to YouTube or you can upload it to uh, Vimeo. Okay. Do you, have a, do you have an account with either one of those? Uh, not at the moment. The only account I have I actually have is with Zoom. Okay. Well, it, the, both platforms are free uh, for the first chunk, but Vimeo or uh, actually you get the the more you do there, you got to pay, right? But it starts off free. Um, YouTube is the number one social media channel on the planet. And I'm doing actually more content on YouTube. Uh, I'm actually doing a new show. Maybe you guys want to participate. I'm doing a new YouTube show. I'm actually recording my first one tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be called um, The Best T-Shirt I Ever Printed. And it's kind of like the background story on the shirt. And Charlie, you might want to do this. So you hold up the shirt and you talk about, this is my favorite shirt. It's for my favorite band, or I raised a million dollars, or I finally learned how to do discharge, or whatever the story is. I want shop owners to talk about that story. And then that's going to be the show. And that'll, uh, I'm looking for about 10, maybe 15 minutes. And yeah, uh, so I'm creating a new show. My old King Touch shirt. Yeah, King Touch shirt, right? 1979. Yeah, well, you could we could do a whole show on that King Touch shirt, right? And um, so the idea is that it's just and it lives on YouTube and with all the backlinks and stuff and go into you and whatever and um, so it's kind of a that's kind of what I'm doing, right? So I'm just trying to invent new things and use new kind of ideas and try different stuff and because you never know what's going to stick right so you just got to constantly try stuff and here's my new thing speaking of time management sean you know what this is no this is the timular app that uh ali was talking about on shirt lab the other day so i'm using this to track my time to focus my time on higher level things and so each one of these colors blue is content by the way is i'm tracking what i'm doing phone calls um outbound sales or you know admin whatever uh, and what i'm learning to use this app and then i'm going to write an article on how to use it for uh production logs and stuff for shops so, so I wanna, I'm, 
using as, the, as you turn it to the blue one up, it automatically. So it's forces. a Bluetooth. It's Bluetooth, right? So it automatically tracks it, and it'll you name it whatever you want. And of course, I use these colored stickers, but you can handwrite or you can use other things on it. So here's how I see a shop using it for sales. It's phone call, lead, follow up, email, that kind of stuff. You can do different things, right? So you can track what people are doing, right? That's what I'm doing with it. Uh, for production, it could be set up, production, takedown, problem, break, Joe's in the bathroom, whatever. These are all different little things. And every single time something happens, you just flip it to a different side, okay? And of course, you got to remember to do it. <laughs> so there's a, it's always there's a touch a, spot, isn't it? There's a challenge there, but it's automatically logging it, right? And then it gives you a graph, right? And uh, so, Charlie, can can I share my screen? Please. Can can they be a? Can you get multiple like host disabled attendee screen sharing? Can you up? Can you give me access? Um, just tell me where, and I can. Okay, down the so you should be on where you see my picture. There should yeah. be some dots. You can probably give me access right there. Okay. So in the upper right hand corner, you can mute me, uh, which could be a good idea to do occasionally. No, it's not, but make you the host. Make me the host or the co-host, and then maybe I can do go. it too. You're now the host. Right. So see if I can share. All right. So let me uh, let me dig this up. Can you there. can you use multiples within the same? Yeah, so Allie has got eight, eight or nine of these running right now. Okay, so I want to I want to do show what do I want to show? I want to show whiteboard, iPhone, advanced. Uh, how do I? So if I'm going to show my desktop, maybe I'll just. So do you guys see this graph yeah. now? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So here is my, this is, it gives you different stuff, right? So this is yesterday, right? So this is my podcast. This is me. I was doing some admin work. Uh, I'm actually giving my son my old uh, iMac because he's going to be doing all of my video content. And so I was cleaning up my Mac. So this is like four hours of me going through files. This is me doing content. This is shirt lab stuff. And these are all phone calls I was on yesterday, right? So if we did a date range, hold on. See if I can uh, do a date range. Uh, we'll do a date range for, uh, from here to, all right, so this is showing all the different days. So moving past disasters in black, content is in blue, shirt lab stuff's in green. You can see, now I'm not tracking all the time. I'm only tracking when I'm actually doing stuff, right? So you can see the days of the week, like, you know, how long I was working, uh, you know, but I'm not tracking like breaks or I'm in the bathroom or I'm doing something I don't want to track. I'm only tracking the things I want to track. And you can see kind of what I'm doing. So you can imagine in a shop, this is your sales team, Sean, or this is production. You know, red could be set up and blue is running a job and brown is a problem or whatever, right? And you can rename it anything. Right? What's it called? It's called Timeular, T-I-M-E-U-L-A-R. And so you, it's a Bluetooth little gizmo and uh, it was $120, $112 a year or something. Uh, if you buy it with the link that you send, uh, I get some credit. <laughs> so I would love to, um, I would love to send you the link. And if you buy it, then I get the money. So How durable like a, is it? Huh? How durable is it? I don't know. It's a piece of plastic. Okay. Uh, will it work in the middle of a shop? I have no idea. I'm in a I'm in a room. Allie has it on her floor running right now. She's tracking embroidery. She's tracking heat press. She's tracking stuff, right? Yeah, don't so, sit through your dryer. 
Well, but on top of the dryer, well, it's plastic. It could melt. Right. It's electronic, and it's a. It, you have to recharge it. Huh? What, Charlie? No, I was, I was joking. <laughs> he froze up. Okay, he froze up. I, I just thought he was staring at me. Oh no. <laughs> so what? What? What was your question? Sorry. No, I was just joking about not sending it through the dryer, but. Okay. Um, now he froze up again. That's a good picture. Yeah. I should screenshot that for a background. Right now. Hey, I'm, we're going to make fun of you later, Charlie. You're 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 freezing up. Oh uh, well. <laughs> welcome to my uh, unstable <laughs> situation here. Yeah. Every time you want to say something, your screen freezes. Is that right? Wow. Oh well. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what's going on. So, uh, what do you? Uh, are you on? Um, are you on wireless? Or are you an Ethernet cable, Charlie? I'm on wireless. Okay, so for video stuff, sometimes uh, if you use your Ethernet instead of uh, Wi-Fi, uh, you you have better video when you do stuff like this. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. If I figure out how to do all of that stuff. You know, Mike. Well, on the back, where is your modem? On the back of your modem, there's a port. You okay. can buy an Ethernet cable and run that to your computer, and you can stabilize your up upload a little bit. Just go to the high school and find some kid in the computer department. <laughs> yeah, right now, you can't go to a high school. All right, we have no idea what you said, but that's okay. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> hey, later, Charlie, you should watch the video to see what this looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I may have to do that. Yeah, all right. Well, cool. Well, um, good. I th if you guys are done, I think we could probably wrap it up for today. Okay, great. So hey, Charlie, thank you so much for the opportunity to be on your uh, on your show. I appreciate it. Well, thanks for coming in, and I'm sure you don't hear a thing I have to say because I'm freezing up. But nevertheless, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, we, that that one all came through. You did a good oh, job. Yeah, figures, okay. No, thanks so much for being on. <laughs> All right. Hey, uh, Adam and uh, Sean, thanks. Brian, thanks. Yosta, thanks for hanging out in Sweden. Hey, what time is it in Sweden now? Eight o'clock at night. Eight o'clock at night. Okay, great. Just in time to have a cigar and a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. great. Thanks for doing this. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks. And uh, Sean, I'll send you that link, okay? Awesome. Thank you. All right. Hey, talk to you guys later. Bye. Thanks so much. See ya.